Hello all, this is Jennifer Morris and I have a Bible study for you today that is based on the book of Daniel and actually the life of Daniel. And um, I put together this Bible study based on notes that I took from listening to uh, David Jeremiah teach on this subject. And David Jeremiah said that you can find uh, a life plan for success in the lore from the book of Daniel and um, there are six steps to that. He gave us five steps but I found a sixth step that I believe is essential to success uh, with the Lord. So um, I will tell you first of all that um, Daniel was a prince. He was an Israeli prince who was kidnapped by the Babylonians when they took over uh, Israel and he was carried off captive. And even though he was a captive in an enemy nation, he um, maintained his integrity before the Lord by determining in his heart that he would live a life that still honored God in spite of his circumstances. And so he lived a powerful and successful and amazing life. And um, the six steps are, I'll tell you quickly, uh, number one is determine you will not live like a pagan. Number two is ask God to give you favor. Number three is discipline yourself for God. Number four is ask God to give you wisdom, knowledge, skill, and understanding. Number five is do what God asks you to do with what he has given to you. And also remember that you work and live for him. And then number six, the one that I discovered, is uh, pray often and give thanks. This was the lifestyle of Daniel. This was the secret, if you will, to Daniel's success. And so um, number one, determine that you will not live like a pagan. Uh, Daniel chapter one, verse eight says, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank, Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So he was offered, because probably he was a prince and they recognized this, that he was royalty, they offered him all the finest of the Babylonian king. And he said, no, thank you. Um, he had a strict dietary regimen that he was used to. And if he couldn't stick with that, then he... Um, he just said no. He didn't want to defile himself with all of the delightful things that the king of Babylon had to offer. Um, the second thing, ask God to give you favor. Uh, verse 9, chapter 1 of Daniel, verse 9 says, Now God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of the eunuchs. So God gave Daniel favor. God gave Daniel goodwill. And um, that's an awesome thing to ask God for, to give you favor. Do you um, feel like there's somebody in your life that you'd like to have favor? Um, you'd like for them to look at you favorably. You'd like for them to um, just have goodwill and fellowship towards you. You ask God to give you favor, and um, he does. So it's one of those things that it's awesome, and if you don't know to ask for it, uh, you don't. But when you do ask for it, then you see how God really um, blesses you, and you think, I don't know why they like me so much. Well, it's because you prayed and asked God for favor. And... Um, you know, in the Proverbs, it says he makes even his enemies, a man that walks uprightly before the Lord. God makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. And here Daniel is an enemy. He's refusing the hospitality of the king. And yet God gives him favor in front of the chief of the eunuchs, the one who's been instructed probably to care for all of his needs and train him in the Babylonian ways. <clears throat> Number three says, discipline yourself for God. And that would be, um, the verse that goes with that is Daniel 1.12. It says, uh, Daniel said, please test your st servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat and water to drink. So Daniel said, you know, we're not going to eat all your delicacies. I'm not saying we're going to starve ourselves, but give us vegetables and water to drink and test us in this and see if um, God doesn't bless us this way. We're not going to perish we're not going to wither away, <clears throat> but if you allow us to bless God the way we're used to blessing God as much as we possibly can, and you don't ask us to defile ourselves with what you're used to eating, and we are instructed by God not to eat, um, test us in this and see. And um, it's amazing because 
uh, verse 14 says that the eunuch consented with them in this matter, and he tested them 10 days. And verse 15 says, at the end of the 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. So the steward took away their portion of delicacies and the wine that they were to drink and gave them vegetables. So see, God blessed them. They weren't eating all of those rich foods, and yet they appeared healthier, and they appeared even fatter from eating vegetables and water. <clears throat> so fatter in this case is good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> discipline yourself for God. Uh, we, we struggle with discipline in our um, lives, in our personal lives. A discipline that I discovered right away, and I really had no choice in it since I was a little girl, I have always been instructed once my feet hit the floor in the morning that I'm to make my bed. And all of my life, I've gotten out of bed and I've made my bed. There was absolutely no, um, there was no choice in the matter. My mother said, you, when you get up in the morning, you make your bed immediately. And so I've always done that. I, every morning I get up and the first thing I do after I go to the bathroom and I kneel to pray and give myself to God every morning and then I get up and I make the bed immediately. Then I sit down and I enjoy my coffee and my time in the Word of God. Um, those are disciplines every single day for me. Um, I have said this before that I have a, a specific time, a specific place, um, a specific way just in the morning that I uh, draw near to the Lord and I'm blessed with His company and um, He teaches me. I pray and I, I, I give myself to Him. I thank Him for getting me through the night and I offer myself to Him and I say, I'm yours um, to uh, guide, to lead, to instruct, to rebuke, to correct, to bless, to protect. And every day Rod and I pray that God, we thank him first for his peace, provision, and protection. And then we um, ask him for more today. So um, discipline. What can you discipline yourself in? What can you do that, um, the, in this case, Daniel fasted and ate vegetables and drank water for 10 days. Gee, that, that'd be a pretty awesome discipline. But I would suggest you try something else first. Um, I know when I first began trying to fast things, I was instructed by a um, brother in the Lord who had walked with the Lord a lot longer than I had. And he said, well, try something small first, which may not be small to you, but it's not like you only eating or eating nothing and drinking water for 10 days. Give yourself 10 days to not have that thing that you're used to having almost every day. Um, I have a sister who loves to go buy Dunkin' Donuts and buy a great big sugary or sugar-free whatever uh, yummy drink. And, um, you know, I used to do that very same thing. I used to go right down the hall in the mall when I worked there to Barney's Coffee and I would get myself a great big iced coffee every day. And... Um, that would have been the perfect thing to for me to give up because that was my treat to myself every day. So think of something that would be hard. It would be a sacrifice for you. Ask God to help you to not have that thing. Maybe it's cookies every day. Maybe it's, um, I don't know, do you smoke? Maybe give up a cigarette. Or maybe if you smoke 10 cigarettes a day, smoke six. You know, think, pray, ask God what you could discipline yourself in aside from getting out of bed and making your bed in the morning, what, what could you fast just a little, just a little bit of it? And then um, you train your flesh to be um, in submission to your will. And that helps you grow spiritually. When your flesh isn't always screaming and yelling and wanting, um, you're able to think clearly towards the Lord and your spiritual life begins to flourish. Uh, when we're used to walking in the flesh, but we need to discipline ourselves in the Lord and figure out what little things that you can give up for 10 days and then see, you know, pray and thank the Lord at the end of the 10 days. So Daniel's, um, he determined he wasn't going to live like a pagan. Uh, he wasn't going to run and go and do what everybody else did. <clears throat> that was his number one thing. Um, he was a prisoner. He couldn't, but also he wasn't going to live like the Babylonians lived, which was very self-indulgent and very luxuriously. And he determined in his heart he was not going to live that way. He was going to not live like a pagan. Um, he determined in his heart that he was going to maintain his own uh, life quietly before the Lord, between him and the Lord. And um, so he had to pray and ask for favor. I don't know if he did pray about that. I think God just brought him favor, it says in verse 9. Um, 
so that he could do that. So you want to ask God for favor. Uh, you want to determine you're not going to live like a pagan. When I gave my life completely over to the Lord, I decided I wasn't going to go there anymore. I wasn't going to do that anymore. And the older I get and the more uh, closely I walk with the Lord, the easier it is. I had breakfast with a sister a couple days ago and I knew Rod was going to come home early and um, she said, do something for you today. And I drove home thinking, what could I do for me? What, what could I do that I don't do anyway? <clears throat> and I thought, well, I could go shopping. And then I realized, I, the scripture came to me immediately. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I don't want anything. I have everything I need. I have a zillion pairs of earrings and 15 blouses. And I, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. I don't want. So shopping was like, no, I don't want to go shopping. I don't care about that. Well, what did you want to do? Well, you know... Grace had asked me for a little something, and um, what I really wanted to do was bless her. So I went to the store by myself, and I bought this little Zootopia DVD that she wanted to see, and really I wanted to see it too because I love that movie. And I brought it home, and it was a blessing. That's what I did for me today. I blessed us. And then that evening, Rod went to bed early, and Grace and I sat there together and laughed our heads off at that funny movie. So that's what I did for me today. I was able to be a blessing, and I got blessed too. Okay, number four says, um, ask God to give you wisdom and knowledge and also skill and understanding. And the verse that goes with that is Daniel 1, 17. Uh, as for these four young men, the ones who decided not to eat the delicacies, um, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So God not only gave Daniel favor, he also gave him special gifts and talents. He gave him wisdom, he gave him understanding, he gave him skill, and he gave him a special ability to understand visions and dreams. Um, you may not need that ability. Uh, I, I don't feel like I need that ability. A long time ago, when I used to have nightmares all the time, I probably would have loved it, but my sleep is sweet now. I pray for sweet sleep every night. So. Um, if there's a special skill that you would like to have, uh, pray that God will help you develop that skill. Um, I have a brother who's an artist and he is brilliant. And um, he's the head of his beautiful family and he loves the Lord. And I pray that God will give him the gift of Bezalel. You look up Bezalel, he is in uh, the book of Exodus. And I think it's Exodus. And, he, and God was the one who gave him this gift of skill in all kinds of arts and crafts. And he built basically everything that was needed for the tabernacle. All the gold utensils and even the tents, the incense. God gave him an understanding about perfumery. He gave him an understanding about carving jewels um, and gold. And um, he was a woodworker and a fabric maker and he made incense. He had this amazing skill and ability that God gave him. And so that's what I pray for my brother. His name's Jason. He's a brilliant guy. Okay, so ask God to give you wisdom and knowledge and skill and understanding. You want to have skill. You want to have understanding, wisdom, and knowledge. You want those things. Um, wisdom is knowing how to apply knowledge. Understanding is knowing how to use it at the right time. Number five says, do what God asks you to do with what he has given you. And at the same time, remember that you work and live for God. That's part of you living a disciplined life out there, not necessarily going where you used to go. Um, the scripture that goes with that is Daniel 1.20, and it says, And in all matters of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them, the four that were taken into captivity, the king found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm. So um, God had given them skill, he'd given them favor, he'd given them wisdom, understanding, and um, he found that um, the king found when he examined these four men, which is Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these four uh, Israeli men that were taken into captivity, that they were better than all of his magicians and his astrologers. And I totally understand that coming from a background of um, astrology, a background of witchcraft, a background of um, 
fortune telling in my own life. Um, this is better. This is a better, deeper, calmer, um, more certain, more sure, godly understanding when God gives me an understanding of something and he gives me wisdom. And so you need to pray as you go along in your life and ask God to give you um, skill in what he has given you. So you have certain gifts and talents. You may not even know what they are, but you can pray and ask God to reveal to you exactly what they are and then ask God to hone you in those skills, uh, make you uh, succeed in those that, so that they'll be a blessing to him and a blessing to others. Um, the last one that I added actually this morning, I love this about Daniel's life plan for success, is found in chapter six and it's verse 10, and it's pray often and give thanks. So we know that Daniel has had this life where he's been cast into the middle of a crazy thing. Imagine if you were taken captive by a foreign nation and you were put in the king's household and um, you were you had a whole new culture forced upon you. For anyone who has traveled, um, not even abroad, but we moved from a southern culture in North Carolina to a metropolitan culture in South Florida. This is a very international culture here, and it was shocking. You know, I, I told some of my friends when I first moved here, the very first thing I realized is uh, no southern hospitality can be found down here. Zero. Uh, a man was tailgating me to the bank. He tailgated me all the way. I pulled into the bank. He pulled into the bank. I parked and I looked over at him and he looked at me and I got out of my car. He got out of his car and he ran to the door about the same time that I got there. He opened the door, let it slam in my face and walked into the bank. I could not believe it. I could believe it. A man let a door slam right in my face. Now fast forward one year and I went to North Carolina to help my daughter move and I was staying at a motel near the college and a man and I approached the elevator together and we were both waiting on it and the elevator came and he put his hand on the door and motioned for me to please go ahead and go in the elevator while he held the door of the elevator for me. And I thought, yep, I'm back in North Carolina where men know how to treat women. So the culture shock, think of the culture shock that Daniel must have endured. Um, his food was different. His his drink was different. The apparel was probably different. The way they spoke to each other down here, they are so loud. These people from all over the world down here, the Northern people, the people from foreign countries, they shout when they talk. Uh, they gesticulate with their hands and it looks like they're fighting and they're just talking. And that was overwhelming to me when I first moved here. So think of the culture shock for Daniel. And yet Daniel determined in his heart he wasn't going to live like a pagan. That he was going to, oh, I've forgotten the steps. Excuse me. He was going to ask God to give him favor. He was going to discipline himself for God. He was going to ask God to give him wisdom, knowledge, skill, and understanding. He was going to do what God asked him to do with whatever God had given him. And then here we go. The last thing that I noticed about Daniel's life of success is that he prayed often and he gave thanks. That is in chapter 6, verse 10. New guys have risen up. There is a king who um, uses Daniel often, has enjoyed Daniel's company and fellowship, has been given peace of mind through Daniel being able to interpret things for him that he didn't understand. And now the king has been surrounded by more pagan um, helpers, rulers, co-rulers, who have said to him, write a law that no one's allowed to worship anyone but you for 30 days. And the king, they appeal to his ego, you know, and the king's like, yeah, okay, all right, okay. And he signs it into law. Well, Daniel knew that it had been signed into law, but verse um, 10 of chapter 6 says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom. It was his custom three times a day to get on his knees and pray and thank God. And that, that could be our custom, that we pray often. Involve God in everything. If you go to work and someone's nasty to you at work, turn around, go to your desk, sit down, be quiet, and say, God, can you help me here? 
can you help me say what I need to say or not say anything if I need to not say anything? Can you please tenderize their heart and help them deal with whatever that problem is they're dealing with? Can you help me do something that I need to do that apparently I'm not doing? Can you give me favor, skill, wisdom, understanding, knowledge? Um, these are Daniel's life plan for success and they can be our life plan for success when we walk along with the Lord. The first thing that you need to do is to make this book, this wonderful Holy Bible, your guidebook every single day. And when you read the Word of God, the Word of God changes you. God will change your life. You keep submitting yourself to Him and He will change you from the inside out and people will see it, but you'll notice it first. So I hope these uh, steps to a life plan of success help you and I pray that you have a great day in Jesus' name.